like him? Number five. Number five.
Almighty God, to you all the hearts are open, all the fires are known, and from you your secrets are hid. Thanks to the loss of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim what your truth with boldness, and boldly minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We sit to listen to God's holy word. A reading from the word of God, written in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 17, through 29. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs lick up the blood of neighbor, dogs also will lick up your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me? O oh, my enemy, he answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. I will bring disaster on you, I will consume you, and will cut off from Ahab every male, born or free, in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam son of Nabat, and like the house of Basha, son of Ajib, because you have provoked me to anger and have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord said, The dogs shall eat Jezebel within the bounds of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city the dogs shall eat, and any one of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat. Indeed, there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He acted most abominably in going after idols as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. And when Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, lay in the sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? 
because he has humbled himself before me. I will not bring the disaster in his days, but in his son's days, I will bring the disaster on his house. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed, Psalm 51, Psalm 5-1, verses 1 through 11, found on page 533. Stand for the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 43rd verse. Glory be to Christ our Savior. By the word of the Holy Gospel, may all our sins. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. This is the Gospel of Christ.
some words this morning from our gospel. A familiar gospel, and one that usually mind boggles a lot of Christians and a lot of people. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Firstly, the command to love one's neighbor is based on Levitical law in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. And this is that law that God gave to Moses so that the people of Israel may live in ordered society. And though hating one's enemy was not taught in the Old Testament, this was a common inference. Jesus, however, in the Gospel this morning, points out that loving only those who love oneself is what tax collectors and the pagans do. And that is exactly what the book of Leviticus, the holiness code, is all about. That God's children cannot look or behave like or dress like or act like Gentiles and pagans. So if you were to attend a Bible study on Leviticus or hear readings from Leviticus about not eating shellfish, not uncovering the nakedness of your own mother, not laying down with a man as another man and a woman as another woman and so forth and so on, not wearing two linens together. All of this is separating God's people from those who already possess the lands, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Canaanites, and all of the people who worship false gods, that God's people must have a particular look. God's people must behave a particular way. God's people must be different than everybody else. Jesus this morning tells us, even in the way you react to people, it ought to be different. Yes, he says, you have heard that it was said to you, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He reminds them that, yes, this was a teaching. This is what we did. But, Jesus says, no. You must love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. Now, I imagine this must have been very hard for first Jewish Palestine people to listen to. Because when they heard these words from Jesus, the first thing that came to a first century Jewish Palestine person was the Roman oppressors. These were the people who were fighting against them, who were persecuting them, who had them in, quote, slavery. And Jesus challenges his disciples to love and pray for every people who occupy their land. Pray and love them that tax you heavily. Pray and love them that treat you with violence and injustice. So it, isn't, it is more than just saying, oh, but she don't like me, but I'm a Christian, so I love you. No, Jesus goes a little deeper than that. Jesus tells this crowd of first century Jewish Palestine people that, listen, I'm talking about the person who live next door. The Roman oppressors, first thing their mind, first and foremost their mind would go to are the Romans. These are the people. You Jews, you are here worshipping God and going to the temple and doing all your sacrifices, but these are the people. They have your land, they tax you heavy, they, they have been employed, some of you as slaves, and you are to treat them with love, even though they treat you with violence and injustice. There is something about that that is to be said about our friends who live in the United States of America. Yes, we are to protest. Yes, we should not allow certain injustices to happen and our voices ought to be heard. But we must remember, especially those who call and profess themselves to be Christians, that we do these things in love and not hate. Because are we any better 
than the Gentiles and the pagans if we do it in hate, seeking to destroy the livelihood and the lives of others. I don't live in the States, I live in the Bahamas. So in the same way, we Bahamians ought to respond even when it comes to politics. Even when we feel that we have been oppressed and victimized and abused and injustices have happened, we who call ourselves Christians must respond in love. Not lambasting because my party different than yours, not different kinds of injustices, not I ain't giving her a job because he or she is a PLP or an FNM or a DNA. We must realize that Jesus calls us to real love. And what I love most about today's gospel is that if you start to practice what Jesus recommends we do, that will make us precisely children of God. Not going to church, not giving an offering, not staying home or you could say your own prayers, all of that may be trivial at times compared to the person who practices a principle such as this. This would bring us very close to what Jesus says this morning when he admonishes the crowd to be ye perfect. Heard the word perfect. Don't tell me nobody could be perfect. We choose not to be perfect the same way we choose not to be holy. Jesus said, Jesus said, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This love, my friends, is an attribute of God. And what Jesus is saying this morning is to all of us, as he did to those who were listening to him then, is that if we can just practice loving our neighbors as we love ourselves and loving God and loving our enemies, then you yourself would have become more like God. So, the more we love, the more Jesus' followers respond to persecution by loving their enemies, we, like good children, take on the characteristics of our father. I remember my, my mommy always is telling me with some of my behavior, oh, you look just like your daddy. You sound just like your daddy. You even walk like your daddy. I don't know what that means, but she knows. And she sees some characteristics of Paul Bow in me. Now, the same way Jesus is saying to his disciples, you are to look like your daddy, act like your daddy, become like your daddy. Abba, God, your father, you are to emulate him because he is the one who makes the sun rise on the bad and the good. But yet, you could have, I don't like her, and I don't like him, and we don't like them, because they're different than us. When God is showing you that even though we do things that make him upset, did you listen to the psalm? Even from my mother's womb, I was wicked. Yet, be merciful, show me your loving kindness to me. You just said in the psalm you was wicked from your mommy's womb. But yet you're saying, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. So you're asking God to love you. Wicked, old, filthy us. Bad-minded people like us. We ask the God in the psalm this morning to, to create in us a clean heart. We'll sing songs, search me, O God, and know my heart today. And you think when God really searches your heart, he don't say, you all is making me sick. Hmm? But then, we know that he is loving, he is compassionate, he is merciful, and we want those things. And Jesus says, the same way God does it for you who have been wicked from in your mother's womb, you ought to extend that to others. Now, I've realized that this is real hard for many people, including me, because we have become so vengeful and hateful and grudgeful that sometimes love does not take its true effect and we 
have perfected this fakeness in our churches and in our communities that you, know, you just smile at somebody and then when you get in your car, I can't stand her. Huh. And, and all the other know who here this morning and who watching that that is the gospel truth. I do it and you do it. But these are the opportunities when we hear God's word to try and correct some things within ourselves so that we can truly become perfect. Now, perfect doesn't mean in this case flawless because Paul reminds us that all of us will sin. All of us will fall, fall, fall short of the glory of God. So this perfection here means, you know there was a song that says, I want to be more and more like Jesus. I want to be more and more like him. That is our objective this morning in the gospel. Loving your enemies is difficult. It's, it's probably one of the hardest things to do because these people outright hate you. You know, you should try being a priest sometime. They don't like you just because of your style, of the way you administer, of the way you run things. And then, they just don't like you. They don't ask no question. They don't tell no tales. Then they tell tales. And, and, and it even is embedded right in our church. You go to work. Okay, you don't like the priest analogy. You go to work. There's some people on your job who can't stand that you're there. And if you take it in, you ask your children about the jobs they have and the people they employ. There's somebody on that job who's envious, who's angry, who is hateful and they're in church. And why? Sometimes when you ask them, well, I have asked parishioners, but what I do to you? It really ain't nothing. Um, she say, he say, them say, why you don't like me? Tell me. No, 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 ain't nothing like that. So what's the problem? Because the hate already embedded in our hearts. You hear me? And Jesus this morning, my friends, says that this kind of love should not be tainted by anger or lust. This kind of love should be one that is committed to God. And yes, it's hard. And let me tell you how I know it's hard, because on the cross, I'm sure when Jesus looked down at them, I'm sure in his heart, yes, he wanted to save them. But if I was Jesus, I would kill all of them. And I say this, I would kill all of them. But what did Jesus first say? Father, forgive me. They, they, know, they know what they're doing. Now, you don't think somebody of them knew exactly what was going on that day? Of course. That we were killing the Savior of the world. That there's something different about this man. And if a thief on the cross could understand that, you can't tell me Caiaphas then didn't understand that? Because the thief said, Lord. That's an acknowledgement. Lord. Remember me when you come to your kingdom. So the thief knew. And I saw the thief in the synagogue because he was teething. But all of that people didn't know. But Jesus says to us, the same way I can forgive is the same way I call you to forgive. So today, Jesus calls all of us to reflect the Father's perfect, committed, selfless, merciful love in our own lives. Don't just read this text from now on and, oh well, I try to love. No, I mean, that is not what this passage of scripture is calling you to do. Jesus says if you want to be like God, love Him. Get over yourself. Because people who only love themselves, they are Gentiles and pagans. They don't care nothing about nobody else. It's just them. Me, myself, and I. Jesus says, my disciples can't look like that. My disciples can't behave like that. My disciples can't speak like that. My disciples ought to be different. They ought to bring a revolution to the world that's not by violence and it's not by hate. But my revolution that will change and transform the world is love. And you know how I know that that love is powerful? Because when God should have killed all of us, and he had plenty of opportunities to do it, 
He had time to do it in the antediluvian world with Noah. He had time to do it in the new covenant with Jesus. And he had time to do it with this COVID-19 that all of us should have been there. Because you tell me one righteous person that should still be alive. Tell me. And I'll quit my job. Tell me one righteous person in the Bahamas who should live. Lord, if we find ten righteous, would you save the city? Jesus says this morning, remember, our God, the sun comes up on those who are righteous and the unrighteous. It's the same way we are to love one another. It's difficult, but if you want to be more like God, which all of us should want to be, we have it in our hymn book. More and more like Jesus. More of his saving fullness seen. More of his love. More of his love who died for me. Leave this place today and love your enemies. And you'll be just like your dad. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now stand and profess the words of our faith. What we believe as Christians in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 106. Together, we profess, I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now say our prayers using form H found on page 120. Form H. Let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. And bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We commend to your mercy all of who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share, share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. 
fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. Always come to you, O Lord, and all your own we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father Almighty, everlasting God, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic Prayer Form E, page 142. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
We break this thread, the shell in the body of Christ. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. And Rachel, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. And in the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Dora, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. It's the body of Christ, bread of heaven.
8, let us pray. Together we pray, eternal God and heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all of us to give you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now bow our heads as we pray for God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, may be strong in faith and love. May God defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all the people you love and pray for today and forevermore. Amen. Just before dismissal, we wish to remind all of you that services will be in the south of our parish this Sunday. Seven at St. Michael's and Roses, nine here at St. Paul in Clarence Town, and eleven at Holy Cross, Hamilton. We continue to encourage all of our members to please be reminded that we in this parish will be following the social distancing protocols. I'm sure it is uncomfortable for many of us, but remember what we do helps us to keep ourselves safe and sanitized as well as others. Remember, you can still be courteous and polite to those even while wearing a mask, and even though we have to keep some distance, let them know you are Christians by your love so that you will be just like your daddy. I am sure the next time you hear somebody say that, I hope the sermon today will continually ring in your ears that we too are called to be just like your papa, your daddy, Abba, God our Father. The funeral for Juliana Knowles will be held on Saturday, June 27th, 2020 at 10 a.m. in the Church of St. John in Buckley's. There will be no wake. However, I am currently constructing a means for persons to view the body which has come through one door and leave to the next because no matter the occasion, we are still observing social distancing protocols and this will take place until the government and the bishop has notified us otherwise. So we have to follow and, and so please let your family know that even for funerals, nothing changes no matter who the individual may be. Stand now for this mystery. Go in peace, serve the Lord.
Thank you all very much and have yourselves a blessed and productive day.